So believe it or not, you've got a good bit of control over how fast these things grow and it all has to do with... What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having a spectacular day. It is Monday, March 27th here in South Georgia. And on today's video, we're gonna be working in the greenhouse. We're gonna start off by looking at our tomato and pepper transplants, see if they're ready to go in the ground yet. Also gonna talk about how we can speed those up or even slow them down if we need to. We're also gonna get some pumpkin and butternut squash seeds started today. And be sure you stay tuned for the end of the video. I'm gonna tell you about a neat little contest we're doing where you could win a big, big jug of our favorite fertilizer. So let's jump inside here and see what's going on with our veggie transplants amongst the fig jungle. So over here we've got two nice looking trays of tomatoes and some peppers over there as well. And then on this side, we have some stuff that we've stepped up into some larger pots. So these determinate tomatoes here, both the red snapper and roaster variety are ready to go in the ground. You can see we've got a nice little root ball there. I was gonna plant them this past weekend, but it was kind of off and on raining all weekend. Couldn't really find a good window to get them in the ground. And I was gonna plant them today, but we're expecting a pretty decent little storm in the morning, talking about the possibility of hail. So I didn't want to put them in the ground and then have them get beat down by a storm. I've got enough plants here where I could replant if I needed to, but I didn't want to, you know, do that for time's sake. So as soon as this storm passes, I'll probably get these in the ground maybe on the next video because they are ready. So those determinate tomatoes will get planted straight out of that PropTech 162 tray there, hopefully in the next few days. Now for these indeterminate tomatoes and these peppers, we step those up to two and a half inch pots. And I'll give you a closer look at those in just a minute. So for the indeterminate tomatoes, we wanted a little taller plant, little bigger plants. We could plant it a little deeper in the soil there. And then for the peppers here, it's just a matter of me not having my pepper plot ready at the moment. That's a nice looking pepper plant there. We could stick that in the ground right now and it would do just fine. But I don't have my ground ready and I don't want these getting root wrapped. So that's why we went ahead and stepped them up. So that's what we have here. Tomatoes and peppers stepped up into these two and a half inch pots. These are mostly heirloom tomatoes here. Whole flat of peppers there. Then we got some cherry tomatoes there. Some more peppers and a few more tomatoes over there. These are all for our gardens. These aren't necessarily giveaway plants. We'll give away all the extra stuff we have in those other trays. I probably won't plant all four plants for each variety that I have, but I like to have some backups there. I'll probably only plant two or three plants of each variety. And some of these heirloom tomatoes here that we stepped up just a week or so ago are getting very close to being ready to plant. It's amazing how much those roots start thriving and spreading out when you put them in a little bigger pot. Let's see if we can get this one out of here. So there we go. We can see some nice roots on that plant there. We could probably put that in the ground right now if we wanted to, but I think I'll wait one more week or so. Let it get a little taller. That way we can plant it nice and deep. All right, so now let's talk about how we can speed these up, make them grow faster or slow them down, make them grow slower and why you might want to do that. So it's not uncommon for us gardeners to get a little too excited in late winter and start our tomato plants too early. The result is we've got a tomato plant that's ready to go in the ground. The roots are starting to wrap a little bit, but either our ground isn't ready or the weather outside isn't ready. Now, obviously, one thing you can do if your tomato transplants are outgrowing their current container is to just step them up into a larger container like we've done here. That's pretty easy. But what if you've got too many tomato transplants or what if you don't have enough step up containers? And it's just not feasible for you to step them all up. So believe it or not, you've got a good bit of control over how fast these things grow. And it all has to do with your fertilizer rate or your fertilizer frequency. So let's use this little red snapper plug here as an example. So these seeds were started around the middle of February. Here we are, not quite to the end of March. So in about five weeks, we've got a nice, beautiful, ready to go in the ground transplant. 
And the reason we were able to get these to grow out so fast is because we were pushing them pretty hard. Once these seeds germinated and once those seedlings had their second set of leaves, we were feeding them some of this agrothrive general purpose here through our watering system basically every time we water. So we were pushing them pretty hard and the result is they grow out pretty fast. Now if we would have backed off the fertilizer a little bit, maybe only fertilize these once or twice a week, they wouldn't be near as big as they are now. So if your ground's not ready or the weather's not cooperating, you can back off the fertilizer a little bit, slow down the growth a little bit. Now obviously you don't want to compromise the plant health here. You want them to still look nice and green and healthy. So you want them to have some level of nutrients in the seed starting mix or whatever seed starting media you used but you don't have to push them as hard if you're not quite ready to put them in the ground on the flip side of that if your ground is ready and your weather is ready but your tomato plants aren't big enough you can push them really really hard and get them to go ahead grow out and be ready to put in the ground so taking all that into consideration what i've been doing over the last week is not fertilizing these and continuing to fertilize these every time i water because i don't really want these getting any bigger i don't want them getting root wrapped i need to get them in the ground asap these right here won't hurt my feelings at all if they get a little bit bigger so we'll keep pushing these but i've backed off pushing these and i just realized maybe i should clarify a little bit what i mean by pushing them really hard or backing off a little bit now we have an injection system in our greenhouse here but let's assume you don't have one of those you're just watering or fertilizing by hand so if you really want to push your plants, speed them up a little bit, take one ounce of this good stuff here, this Agrothrive General Purpose, mix it in a gallon of water, shake it up good, mix it up good, and water your plants with that every single day. That'll get them to grow out really, really fast. That's how we got those determinate plants ready in about five weeks. But if you're wanting to slow them down or maybe not have them grow as fast, same concept, about one ounce of this, per gallon and then only give it to them about once or twice a week and if you don't have any of this and want to give it a try you can go to their website agrothrive.com and use the code lazy dog farm to get 10 percent off so i'm happy with how everything's going with our tomato and pepper transplants just have had to do a little minor adjustment there with our fertilization to slow some of those down a little bit now before we start planting some pumpkins and butternut squash seeds here in the greenhouse i need to give a really heartfelt goodbye to grandpa gordy so late last week we lost grandpa gordy he said taters is not a word and he unsubscribed now, I don't think Grandpa Gordy was part of the Lazy Dog fam for a very long time because of hearing the word taters bothered him. He probably didn't have to watch many videos before he got really upset. So we were down one subscriber that day last week when Grandpa Gordy left us. But fortunately, we gained 218 new subscribers that day. So we were still up about 217. And so all jokes aside about Grandpa Gordy, I just wanted to use this as an opportunity to thank everyone for watching the channel. We've been overwhelmed by the response lately. It's been growing so fast recently. I want to thank all the people who have kind of been here from the beginning that watch every single video and also all the new people that are coming in. We hope you're enjoying what you're seeing. And I don't know Grandpa Gordy personally, but if you see him around, tell him how your taters are looking. So now let's talk a little bit about what we're going to be planting here. So we've got some giant pumpkin seeds and some giant butternut squash seeds. Both of these are available on our website at LazyDogFarm.com. And both of these were grown by our good friend Ryan over at Heavenly Hills Homestead in West Virginia. He grows giant things competitively and I think is the current world record holder for giant butternut squash. So he knows what he's doing as far as growing out these giant vegetables and getting the good seeds from them. So these aren't just your average run-of-the-mill giant pumpkin seeds. According to Ryan, these have the potential to make a pumpkin anywhere from 800 to 1,200 pounds. And then these giant butternut squash seeds have the potential to grow a butternut squash around 80 pounds or so if you do all the pruning and those types of things. If you just kind of let the plants go, he said it will still make some monster butternut squash. And you can eat these. You really don't want to eat these giant pumpkins, but this be a great food source 
And then we've got some Seminole pumpkin seeds here, which I've grown many times, but it's been a while since I've grown any Seminole pumpkins. These things do really well down here in the south. They tend to be somewhat pest and disease resistant. They don't make huge pumpkins. They're kind of small, but they make a lot of them. And they store really, really well. Sometimes you can get these things to store more than a year. So it's a great kind of long-term food source. You grow them out in the warmer months and then they'll store for a long time and you can just grab one and eat it whenever you want. So according to Ryan, who's the expert on all this giant pumpkin, giant butternut stuff, you want to start these seeds in some larger pots because they start to grow so fast once they germinate. You don't want to start these in a little prop tech tray, which I have done in the past. So we're taking his advice here and we're going to start them in these two and a half inch pots and transplant them out of here. So I've got four pots for giant pumpkin, four pots for giant butternut squash, and then we're gonna do our Seminole pumpkins and these here in the back, these black pots here. I think I've got 16 of those there. I could get away doing the Seminoles in a prop tech tray, but just for consistency's sake, we're gonna do them all in these two and a half inch pots today. So let's start by getting some soil in these little two and a half inch pots here. Try not to make too big of a mess. Now this stuff will pack down a little bit once we water it in or moisten it here in a minute. All right, so we got those pots filled there. Now we're just gonna kind of moisten this seed starting mix here. All right, that should be good. I'm gonna make a little bit of a depression down in the center of all these pots here. Where we can kind of stick our seed and have it sit in the middle there. The wind's picking up outside. Sounds like it's about to get rough out there. Hopefully we can get done here and get our giant pumpkin seeds down in there. Get our giant butternut seeds here. And get our Seminole pumpkin seeds planted in the back here. And then lastly, we'll cover up our seeds with some good old dog's perlite here. And now that we've got those planted and hopefully before we get blown away here, let me tell you about a fun little contest we're going to do with these giant butternut squash seeds. So we're going to see which of you out there can grow the biggest giant butternut squash and whoever does is going to get a free jug, big jug, of this AgriThrive fertilizer here. Now the rules are pretty simple but I'll go over them real quick. So number one, you have to use our giant butternut squash seeds. That way the playing field is leveled. Now I don't know why you'd want to use any other butternut squash seeds because these here have world record genetics in them but just so it's even so it's fair you got to start out with our seeds here. If you don't have any of these already you can get some at lazydogfarm.com. Now you can use whatever growing techniques you want to use to grow the biggest giant butternut squash and maybe we'll get Ryan on a video at some point so he can kind of give some of his tips that he used to grow those world records. Now I know we've got viewers all over the country so I think it's best just to set the timeline for this all the way until the fall until we get our first frost down here. That will give everybody all over the country a fair shot to grow a really big giant butternut squash. So we'll let this contest run all throughout the warm growing season and we'll cut it off in say November or so. And when you do harvest your award-winning submission, you have to put it on a scale and take a picture of it on the scale so we can clearly see the weight of it there. Then to submit that photo, just post it on Instagram or Facebook. Use the hashtag GiantButternut and then use the little at symbol and tag us Lazy Dog Farm. So you can post it on Instagram or Facebook. Just use the right hashtag and use the at symbol to tag our page. That way we'll see all the submissions we can kind of keep them all categorized there and see who the big winner is next fall. So this should be pretty fun. I've never grown any giant butternut squash. Don't really know what to expect, but we're going to have a blast trying. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Don't forget to check out our affiliate links in the description below and go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com. Also, let me know in the comments below if you're growing any pumpkins or winter squash this year and what varieties you're going to be growing. And if you want to see a pretty cool 
pumpkin harvest check out this video right here from this past year where we harvested several different varieties of pumpkins that we planted in a big plot we were just filling up the back of the buggy with these things beautiful pumpkins and tasty pumpkins as well so check that out and we'll see you next time right here at lazy dog farm